I haven't had a life uh, of spirituality. My father's an atheist and my mother practices uh, spiritualism. She's Catholic, um, but she's Dominican. So in the Spanish culture, uh, they tie a lot of the Catholicism with witchcraft. So in my mind, uh, the idea of God was never really uh, far because of the spiritualistic mindset that my mother had. So it was like, there was always a respect that I had for the Bible and things like that because she was Catholic also. Basically in my life in New York, it wasn't really, wasn't really good. It, you know, in my mind, it was either you become a doctor or you in the street. And uh, being a doctor didn't really seem that appealing to me. So I chose to, to go in the street and as I was getting older, and uh, started to look at myself and look at my surroundings. A lot of my friends die, people die in front of me. I started thinking in my head, you know, because I respected God and acknowledged that there was a God, I decided to ask him some questions like, why is this the only two options? Is there anything else? And uh, friends of mine were at Venice and they uh, asked me to come to church with them. And when I came to church with them, I literally don't remember what the person was saying. I literally believed that it was only God talking to me. As I opened my mind to hear this individual speak, God said this is an opportunity for him to speak to me. There was no heaven explanation. There was no everlasting life explanation. It was literally, I exist and you could be with me. And that's what made me say, I want to be with you before I understood heaven and everlasting life and things like that. And I was on a train and uh, uh, I was in a gang, so I took my bandana off and I threw it in the train tracks and I took knives out of my pocket and I threw it in the train tracks and I said, I don't want this anymore. Ever since then, it's always been an intellectual thing for me. Uh, if there's no such thing as a mysterious faith to me, God has shown me too much for things to be a mystery. I may not know what he's gonna do, but I know he's going to do something. Once I was born again, I read the Bible like four times, Spirit of Prophecy, read all the books, you know, everything, everything. And I, even though I wasn't grasping it, I believe God was using it so that way he can bring it to remembrance at this time. The relationship with the Father and the Son came about uh, after much searching because I was, I was trying to search out doctrine to be closer to God because I could not understand who He was. And I, from the beginning, it was an intelligent faith, so the mystery of the, of the Godhead was unacceptable to me. I was like, the mystery has to be revealed in His truths. So I studied Christ's nature and I studied Christian perfection because I believe Christ was fully man and I believe that Christian perfection is attainable through Christ and he was setting me up to accept who the Father and the Son was. Uh, and literally I was living in New Jersey at the time I heard the, the country living message. Uh, we left New York and uh, moved to New Jersey all the way by Pocono so it was in the country. Um, they were attacking one of my brothers on, on a social network. I feel loyalty to, to this brother because he helped me so much. And they were attacking him and I was like, this is not God's spirit to attack him just because he believes something different. I said, let me help my brother out and pull him to the side. And I private messaged him and we got into a conversation and he said, have you considered this verse, John 17, 3, for this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And he sent me that verse, and I didn't talk to him for a week. <laughs> and me and my wife, we started fasting for seven days. And on the last day, I couldn't sleep, and the Lord woke me up. And he told me, read John 14, 15, 16, and 17. And I woke up and I read it like five times that, that morning. By the sunrise, my wife woke up, and I was just like, it's right here. It's right here, Jesus is his son and he's a father, and he's my father, and he's just, you know. And, and she was kind of like, uh, she was still skeptical. And then as she was doing her devotionals, she was reading through Romans, which I was still on John. And she read Romans and she said, Jadiel is right here in Romans, the father and the son. It changed my confidence 
and what God's ability in me was. Understanding the Father and the Son and what Christ in me is producing in me, I realized that the Father is, is my Father. You know, it's not labeled that He has as God and He's God the Father as, the, as such as a label that He has, but it's an identity. It's His identity and He is the Father, my Father. And the Son in me, presented me before the Father as a brother to me, saying, you're his son too. This is, and when I realized that I was his son, that's when I, just like when I realized Jesus was his son, I was like, he's the son of God. When I realized I was a son, I realized you've forgiven me. You have forgiven me. And it cleared my mind. To know that I'm accepted in the beloved is, I don't think about anything else. I can't, it's hard. <laughs> In my life, I've never had an authority over me. I've always had equals. You know, when I was in, in the street, you know, those people were my, were my brothers. You're not supposed to be my head. You're not supposed to be my dictator on which, which direction I should go. You're supposed to be my brother. And if my brothers are incorrect, we were prone to say, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you decided to do that. Let me, let me help you understand this. You know, it was just, it was natural in the street, it was natural in my family to, to cling on to each other as brothers. So when I got in the church, I, I assumed, I assumed that it would be the same, especially when I understood the Father and the Son. I assumed that it would be wonderful for me to share it. And it was a bitter experience to share it in the church. Uh, the church that I've grown up in, that I was brought into in the beginning of my walk completely rejected me. Yeah, I feel, I feel such a blessing being here because, you know, reading statements like the body of Christ and everyone's hand and everyone is together and everyone is brothers, was a, that was a mystery to me because I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I come here and everybody is interested. Everybody wants to talk, everybody wants to help, everybody wants to correct and expound on something, tweak, you know, everybody wants to perfect the saints. This is the calling of God's people. I feel the necessity to assemble. If you don't believe in anything else, at least you should see the necessity, the mandatory idea that God has that His people should be united. <laughs>